Hey, I just want to talk quickly because there's been a lot happening in the news, starting with um, the Israeli attack that happened, oh gosh, last night, um, night before, my timing's a little off, but regardless, this was following on the heels of a leaked document that detailed more or less what was going to happen, and the Israelis went ahead and did it. Now, for some background, intelligence documents were leaked on October 15th that de detailed a plan that some people criticized as not being properly shared, and it was maybe leaked deliberately, or this and that. We'll go over that in a second. Uh, the documents appeared on a Telegram channel called Midi Spectator. The uh, sender was somebody anonymous. The Midi Spectator did not have any connection to this person. So far, the guy who runs that channel has not been arrested, and I don't know that he will be because it sounds like he's being upfront about it. I don't know why he would do something like that. They can find who he is. It would be kind of dumb, especially in light of Julian Assang and everything that happened with him. So I don't know. If they were going to arrest him, they probably already would have. But in the meantime, the blame went to an Iranian-American government employee who was a cleared personnel um, who has also since been cleared of that. We can talk about that a little later. But after the documents were leaked, Israel, leaked, Israel followed up with an attack very similar to what was detailed. Maybe it was a deliberate leak. I think it prevented World War III. Maybe not. What happens after this? Let's get into it. The Daily Mail talked about it. Israel plans for a potential strike in Iran and are leaked online amid an alleged U.S. intelligence breach. Uh, the IDF running out of training missions in preparation for retalia retaliatory attack. Okay, this is all going on while the IDF still hasn't finished clearing up what's going on in Gaza, still has stuff going on in Lebanon, and now they want to start a war with Iran. Well, you could say start or this and that. I know they always say retaliate whenever Israel does something, but th the fact is they are re re retaliating, they say, against Iran striking inside Israel, which, by the way, we haven't heard too much of. Earlier on the 2nd, I think, uh, Iran launched missiles inside of Israel, and we did not get any pictures until very recently that actually they did hit the airbase where the F-35 planes are located, and that was enough to make Israel go back and try to get revenge, quote-unquote, against Iran. Well, why did Iran do that in the first place? You can get into that, but uh, this, this whole thing obviously has a lot to do with events being kicked off on October 7th. But the point is, these documents are top secret. State the IDEF has been moving missiles and organizing training exercises for aircraft, including air-to-air -air combat and search and rescue operations. While the papers are yet to be verified, they've been verified. They're the real deal. The U.S. have not designed their authenticity after they circulated on social media with one saying the leak is deeply concerning. Yes, that was uh, the Speaker of the House here, U.S. officials, Mike Johnson, deeply concerning. These are real documents, okay? They wouldn't say that if they were phonies. This person here was unfairly blamed. She's an Iranian-American, Ariane Tabatabi. Uh, I think she works in, yeah, naval intelligence. The documents that you will see a little later, say they say NGA, National Geospatial Agency, at the top. It doesn't mean that a naval intelligence person wouldn't have access to them, but I think it's a little unfair that they automatically went after the Iranian-American. Uh, don't know how much of this is fostered. I mean, they already tried to say that uh, an assassination attempt against President, former President Trump was uh, Iranian-guided. I'm not buying that. I think this is more just to get Iran in the news, to gin up the American public and get them used to the idea of going to war with Iran and, hey, why not blame an Iranian here? We've seen this movie before. They always try to do this. The American public, about 30% of them any given time, are ready to go with war with anybody. And, well, we don't like Iranians anyway. We don't like Arabs, or we don't like Russians, or we don't like Chinese. It's easy. It's easy to do that. So they get everybody spin up, spun up about this. Now, this person has been cleared ever since then. I don't have that story here, but she's not the one who leaked it. The FBI is still investigating. Plan investigates the intelligence leak of potential Israel plans to attack Iran. Now, it doesn't take much to find who had access to this document. There's two, two pages. Anybody who's ever worked with these documents knows that the stuff is just not circulated around. You have to have the clearance to look at it, and you have to have some, something called NTK, need to know. And even then, you don't necessarily have access to the document unless you're working on those programs. And this was inside of National Geospatial Agency. It was created there. It was probably, it was probably shared online in, within that community. You can't just get it through the regular internet. You have to have a login. And anytime you access a document like that, th th there's logs. They can find out who accessed it who shared it, uh, who might have printed out a copy. There's going to be a log of that. And if you decided to try to stick a USB into a computer in a government office, especially in the intelligence community, that's going to immediately alert, immediately alert the security people, and you're going to be found out very quickly. So however this happened, 
this sharing will be traced. Think about Reality Winner. She was, uh, yeah, that was the name, Reality Winner. She copied a document that she thought was going to incriminate Donald Trump. She thought it was a smoking gun. She burned a copy for herself and then shared it, and they narrowed it down to, I think, you know, 20 or 30 people who had access to this document. She was found out, and she's in jail for just releasing that one document. I, I think a lot of this goes back to Hillary Clinton, you know, when she, I mean, took a, a boatload of classified documents and sent them to a personal computer. I mean, there was there were things, at least top secret, special access programs, whatever else. That's the kind of stuff that can put you away for life in prison. But of course, she's Hillary Clinton. They didn't prosecute. There's all kinds of political reasons why they didn't do that. But there are people in jail for sharing far, far less. So whoever shared this one document here is going to be doing some time if they find it out, if they find out who did it. But the reality is, I don't think this thing was a leak. I think this was... I, th I think it was deliberately shared. And it wasn't to convince the Iranians of anything. Uh, it wasn't to, to, to send a message to the Iranians. It, it wasn't about trying to get them to... The Iranians already know this. I mean, maybe not every detail, but they, they generally know what's going on. This is potentially somebody within the government who wants to let the American public know that things are getting a little out of control over there and maybe you should pay attention and uh, vote the, accordingly. Who knows if there was a political angle like that behind it or maybe just call your congressman or, or something. Or maybe they just wanted to try to throw some sand in the gears of Israel running away with dragging us into a war with Iran that Iran doesn't want and we don't want. Now, let's take a close look at this document. I heard some things on Judge Napolitano's show. So, oh, this was Five Eyes material and it wasn't shared with Five Eyes. Well, that's not exactly accurate. If you take a look at the top here, see where it says Top Secret, TK, FGI, SISR. This is the overall classification for the document. And the way these things work, if you look down at each paragraph, there's a marking here on each one. And that gives you an idea of what each section is classified. So this one here says secret, that first S, secret. This here is TS, top secret. This one here is secret. This one here, unclassified. The word sources is obviously not any kind of secret or classification worthy word. But when you combine everything into one page like that, you have to take the highest classified stuff and mark it, mark the entire page or the document that it's attached to all gets classified at the highest level. So if you have one paragraph that makes it top secret, whatever else, it has to be up here. Now, if they took that part out or redacted it, maybe then that would change the overall classification of the document. But right now, for this, top secret, TK, FGI, ISR, and RSN, no foreign. This last part, no foreign. No foreign, that means you can't share that even with our, our allies. That's, that's what that is. So it's not quite accurate that it was not shared with our allies. The parts that were, like maybe this line right here, this part here that says TSTK Arsen Rel2 USA Five Eyes, okay, Rel2 USA, relevant to USA and Five Eyes, <clears throat> that could be shared. This one line right here could be. Um, if they could say this other information that says Five Eyes, Five Eyes, they could share that with Five Eyes separately. Uh, or put it, or redact, either redact this document officially or, um, or, or put, it, put that same information into a different product. But because it... It has that classified uh, no foreign in there. The whole document couldn't be released the way it was. That's why I think there's a lot of confusion. Also, on, um, on his show, he said FGI, ISR. He thought that meant intelligence, surveillance, reconnaissance. That doesn't. This means foreign government information, ISR, Israel. This, this classification here, these are called caveats. After the main classification is top secret, these are called caveats after this here. And this one here means foreign government information, Israel. It's related to Israel. So that's, that's what that is. There's a little confusion there. Usually when you see that word or those, that acronym, ISR, it means Intelligence, Surveillance, Reconnaissance. That's not it. Anyway, you look through the information and the part that uh, stood out, we talked about uh, the IF, you know, launching airplanes from a certain airfield and, you know, send out bunker busters and, and doing what they're going to do. That's more or less what happened or what they planned to do. And, you know, there it was in the flesh. So they, the Israelis didn't change their, their plans a whole lot from what this document was. They were pissed off it was released, but, hey, tough cookies. So that got released. And, of course, once they did their thing, you know, 100 Israeli aircraft used in Iran strike with no losses. Oh, they were so successful. Wait a second. 100 Israeli aircraft used in Iran? They weren't actually, they didn't cross into Iran. That's not exactly accurate. They got near the edge. Uh, they they launched a few things and hit some S-300s, but they also picked up some signals from what I was reading in other areas 
that there was there was air defense systems that they either didn't know what they were or they were uh, surprised to find that there was something beyond what they expected. So they, they turned back. They did not go all the way through. I mean, after all, why would you knock out the air defense? That's just your first step. You knock out the air defense, then you go in and do your main mission, which is to get the big targets, the juicy targets, whatever it was. But all they did was they hit a few air defense targets. They were going to launch some missiles from outside the area, which they did. Those were shot down. They didn't cross into Iran. No losses because they aborted the mission early is how it went down. Okay, so Israel, Israel targeted Iran's Russian-made S-300s. Well, Iran also has S-400s. They may even have some 500s. Who knows? But they know how to use them. And here you go. Satellite images show damage at Iran. Military sites after Israel attack. Yeah, well, satellite also shows damage at Israel's airbase that housed F-35s, but we didn't talk about that. We, we only recently got that. I haven't found the images, but they are out there. Uh, but they want to talk about this in the Western media, make it sound like, you know, look at, look at Israel, they're such heroes, they're so proud. Well, they weren't exactly successful in what they wanted to do. The, the whole point of knocking out the air bases, if you're going to, the, excuse me, the air defenses, you're going to knock these guys out, you're going to go after the major targets. That didn't happen. Uh, the Iranians responded, and the Iranians, this is on the 2nd, when they first launched, you know, October 2nd, into Israel, but they responded with a similar barrage, and you can see the fireworks knocking the stuff out of the sky. There's videos out there. And the Iranian population was kind of joking. Like, We've seen better fireworks displays on the holidays. He said, what's this? It's kind of lame. Didn't hit any of the targets that Israel swore they were going to hit up and down. And the reality is Israel cannot penetrate Iran's air defense. Now, if they may try again, but how many times can they try? How many more weapons do you think they have? How many more can they get from us? Um, we're so busy trying to produce what we say we're going to give them to resupply their Iron Dome missiles, which, by the way, Raytheon can only produce about 500 of those a year, and that's going to last Israel less than a couple of months in, in terms of defensive missiles. Now, what they use for offensive missiles, they still take forever to make. So Israel does not have that native capacity to build all those weapons. We do not have the capacity, let alone the surge capacity, to build more than what we are already supplying them. So they cannot run a war of attrition against Iran, especially not when you combine what's still going on in Gaza. They're still getting pecked away down there. They haven't, they haven't finished murdering everybody down there and, and you know, going after Hamas. Hamas is still there. They're getting a hell of a fight from Hezbollah in Lebanon. Uh, it is not 2006 again. They have never fought this kind of a war in the 75-year existence of Israel. They are going up against a war of attrition, which is not going to be answered by just a couple of airstrikes and go away. That's it. If they expect to attack Iran again, if they expect to survive, there's, there's no word that Iran is just going to not do anything because Iran is not going to sit there and get punched in the face like Damascus regularly does or like Lebanon did or any of the usual targets that Israel goes out and hits. Uh, there's a lot of pressure at home. I think the, the Iranian public is very pleased that the Air defense systems work the way they did, but there's also a lot of pressure at home to not let it happen again. And Iran is doing whatever they can to stay out of this war by communications through Qatar, which eventually makes its way back to the U.S. And the U.S. is saying similar things. We got this. We'll try to reel in Netanyahu. Meanwhile, there's things going on within the Israeli government. The defense minister, Gallant, is rumored has it telling Netanyahu we need to make some concessions and we are not prepared to go farther into Lebanon, let alone a war with Iran. Netanyahu is having none of it because if the action stops, he winds up getting deposed and he has to face criminal charges anyway. Uh, but this is getting very risky. I think this, what just happened here with stopping this mission by, that was detailed in these documents by, by coming to completion, uh, if they had attacked Iran more seriously, Iran would have responded with something much more serious and seriously hit Israel even harder in targets beyond military. And then, of course, everybody would get dragged into war. And before that, who knows if it goes nuclear or not. But it is not a smart place to be when we're letting somebody like Israel drag us into potentially another world war. Uh, the, the American public really doesn't know just how close we came to World War III, I don't think. The, these documents being leaked potentially, potentially uh, were, were, were enough to, to wake a few people up. I don't know if there's any adult supervision going on in the White House, but we have an election coming up. And I don't know that it's going to matter who gets elected. When it comes to foreign policy, no matter who gets elected, we get John McCain. But I guess we're going to find out. Have a good one.